Welcome on the Deadwood Jedi. This is a great Shadow Legends video. Today we're going to be talking about Rorik Wormbane in the clan boss specifically. And before we get too deep into it, I do want to let you guys know this video is sponsored by Contra Returns. If you are old school gamers like myself, you remember the 1987 classic Contra. It's a side-scrolling action game that was super fun to play and one of the first really great side-scrolling games that we had back in the day. I think I played it on my original Nintendo in fact. Well, now it's available now for the new generation uh, in mobile form in Contra Returns. Whether you're an old school Contra fan or a new school player that's never even heard of this game before, Contra Returns is a lot of fun. And I don't say that very often, but honestly, recording this footage for the video was actually really enjoyable for me. Uh, there's just so many different ways to play this game. Not only do you have like 10 different heroes where each with their own unique skills and abilities, but you have a variety of different weapons that you can equip each one of your champions with whatever weapons you want. So it's really customizable. You can really, you know, change your hero to fit your play style which i had a blast with not only that there's a bunch of different gameplays there's uh different like 20 different levels of story mode there's challenges like one shot one kill type of things there's an arena which honestly was like one of my favorite parts where i was going one-on-one -on -one against different people that was a blast and then on top of that you also have a co-op mode but it also brings it back a lot of nostalgia for those of you that know the old school game and even those of you that are new Every time you face a boss, there's like a little caption of where this came from. And it shows you the old school animations that were in the 8-bit version of this game. Um, it's really fun. It has the original soundtrack, a bunch of the original stages and bosses. But there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in this game that is really, really enjoyable. So I definitely recommend you guys download this. It is completely free to play. Yes, you can spend money to get better, but you really don't have to. Whether you play this game on your bathroom breaks for five minutes at a time, or you sit down and really dedicate a few hours to advancing, either way, you're really going to enjoy playing this game. So I highly encourage you guys, go ahead, hit that download link. It's in the description and the pinned comment of this video down below. So make sure you get Contra Returns. Uh, it's available on iOS and Android. It's a lot of fun and uh, yeah, go kill some things. So Rorik Wormbane is, I think, a very solid clan boss champion. Probably not somebody you're going to want to bring in for every team, and he's not going to make or break your team, but he does bring some unique skills and abilities to your squad, and I figure we should go over all that before you guys go ahead and fuse him. Now, uh, I've had a lot of time. I've kind of I filmed this uh, a lot of this video uh, when the test server first started about a week or two weeks ago and I've had some time to kind of think about Rorik and how he fits in this game um, I like this champion, but I don't think he's meta and I have a feeling that many of you probably won't need this champion Now as always if you have the opportunity to fuse a champion always always go for it because you never know how things are going to change in the future when we get new bosses new material all of a sudden the champion becomes meta we this champion hasn't even been in available to people yet and so we haven't even had the majority of the community a chance to play with him and really figure out how best to use him experiment with it, with him in a variety of different ways and this is the kind of champion where there's going to be some unique ways to use him because his passive abilities are so is so interesting and unique and different we're going to come up with strategies for him as time goes along. Um, that said, I don't have a ton of them right now. And for clan boss, it's pretty straightforward. He's going to be a very solid damage dealing champion, and he's going to do uh, be good because he's not going to be able to be stunned. And those are the two biggest things with him. So I'm going to show Rorik's stats in the background in just a minute here. But first, I figured I'd go over his skills so you understand why he's so interesting for clan boss and what we have to do to make him work. Now, obviously, the one thing that really shouted out clan boss champion was this passive ability where he's immune to stuns. Uh, that's a huge thing, and it's usually one of the, the factors when we're dealing with the clan boss. It's very hard to account for and makes it very difficult. He also deals more damage to bosses and takes less damage from bosses, so that means he's going to be able to survive those stun hits longer, so that's really big. He also has this all battles aura of 19%. That's actually really significant, and that can go a long way for helping you build your teams even better. When you don't have to worry as much about getting to those speeds, it makes it a lot 
easier, I mean a lot easier to build damage on your champions or to build sustain on your champions, whatever it is you're looking to do with him. Um, and I think he's going to be good for all different types of teams, traditional teams or unkillable teams. I think there's definitely a potential to be able to use them for both. Um, the other interesting part of him is this A3 where when he's counterattacking, this is the skill that he uses. So most of the time when we counterattack, we use our A1 skill. For him, he's going to use his A3. This is a skill that ignores 50% uh, of the target's defense and does the most damage out of all of his abilities. It's a very, very solid skill for him. So uh, between those three abilities, the aura, the passive, and the scale breaker, I said this guy should be able to do some good stuff for clan boss. Now, obviously, there's some issues here. The A1 is going to be very problematic because it's a double hit, um, and basically because you can't stun the clan boss, it's going to give you a 30% turn meter boost overall, 15% for each hit. Now, a 30% turn meter boost on his A1 can be very problematic. There are some caveats, though, um, and some reasons why this actually is a lot easier to tune than, say, like a Pain Keeper or somebody else has a turn meter boost on their A1. One, it's not relying upon critting. It's not relying upon, uh, you know, weak hits or strong hits. It's going to happen every single time. So that's good. It gives us some consistency. The second thing, counterattack isn't going to affect his speed tune. And the reason why is because he doesn't counterattack with his A1 skill. He counterattacks with his A3 skill, and that is massive as far as speed tuning. It makes it a lot easier to plug him in and go, oh, okay, this is how he's going to work. So between those two things, it's a big, that's a big help. Uh, we don't have to worry about the masteries that he takes. We don't have to worry about uh, any other kind of ally attack abilities, anything like that. Um, I'm sorry. Actually, that is the one thing you do have to worry about are ally attack abilities. Ally attack abilities, of course, they have people use their uh, default skill. And this is only the scale breaker is only a default skill when counterattacking, not when ally attacking. So an ally attacker won't work with Rorik Wormbane. That's the only thing you have to be careful about unless you can predict it, unless you can keep it consistent um, and then it can work. But like a champion like Krila, where she doesn't choose the same champions every time, it's not going to be a good combination. So that is the one negative with it. Um, the, the other thing is this A2 ability here. It's a single target hit. It doesn't do crazy damage. It's more of a debuff type of skill and that has no effect on the clan boss. So one of the things I like to do that I did is I disabled that Dragon's Rage. Just don't use it. Um, there's no point. Use the double hit from the A1. It does more damage anyway. And then use that A3 with counterattacks and other abilities. It's a very strong skill. Um, so you can use those uh, to get your damage done. Now, when I was speed tuning and what I did is I actually brought in Berserker here. Uh, and the reason why is Berserker also has a 30% turn meter boost on his A1. The only things I had to watch out for was one, making sure the cooldowns matched uh, for what uh, Rorik's cooldowns match. The base speed, making sure those are the same. And then the other thing that was important is I had to make sure I didn't bring in a counterattacker because obviously Berserker will use his A1 on counterattack. It won't affect the speed tune when I'm actually using it, right? I can bring in a Valkyrie. I can bring in a Skull Crusher. I can bring in a Martyr because Rorik doesn't use his A1 on the counterattack. But just for simulating it in the clan boss calculator, I just use Berserker and it worked really, really well. Check out the speeds that we have on all these champions that we are bringing into these teams are all considerably lower um, and part of the big part of that reason is that 19% aura from Rorik that can actually be a huge huge thing for uh, for you when you're building your teams this guy's going to be very good for a lot of people in progression spots of the game right when you're still at brutal clan boss nightmare clan boss he's going to be really helpful because now you don't have to worry about the stun if you can have him take the target and also he's lowering the speed requirements for all your other champions making it much easier to gear every Everybody and get you guys up to speed for the clan boss. That's a huge, huge bonus. So definitely uh, think that he has a good place in there. On top of that, he has one of the highest base attacks in this game. So I was actually built, able to build his attack super high, um, build his crit damage super high, and get him to do some decent damage. He's not a great damage dealer. He's good, but he's not great. Like, he's not going to be insane. The numbers aren't going to be super crazy, but I can show you guys the numbers that he does put up at the end of this so you have an idea of the kind of damage that he can do because it is significant. He's not a, uh, you know, he's not a wilting flower out here. This guy can hit, but he's also not going to be breaking any records. Uh, this guy is not going to be... Uh, 
more damage dealing than say a really well built rosin or anybody like that. Um, he'll do his work, but he's not gonna, you know, crack any records when he does it. Um, and that's kind of the negative with him, right? Is that when you're building up a legendary, you're building up somebody to really, uh, fill a role on your clan boss team. You want them to, you know, do something exceptionally well. His thing that he does exceptionally well is he takes a stun. That's not necessarily something we always need. Um, and so that's kind of a, an unfortunate thing, especially as an attack-based champion. That means you're probably not going to build his defense super high. But if you watch my the traditional team that we have going, you see I have an ally, ally protection in there. That's going to really help him stay alive. The 15% damage reduction from bosses, the ally protection. He's actually not even the first person to die on this team. And so you can see he has some potential when it comes to these fights. But the damage he's going to do is not really... Uh, exceptional. You know, he's going to be hitting for close to 100k with that A1, the double hit there. Um, and he's going to be doing, you know, not too far from that with the A2. And the A3 is definitely going to be cracking pretty hard. I think I've seen numbers as high as like 180,000 damage um, and usually kind of s hovers around the 120, 150,000. Those are good numbers, especially when you're coming off of a counterattack, which is doing like, what, 75% less? So he's definitely going to be doing some work for you. Uh, he just doesn't bring anything else to the table. So there's a, there's a high and ceiling to what he can do for your team. Um, but he's still solid in that role. I think where he's really going to be very good, I think there's some alternate unkillable teams that you could kind of use with him. One of the issues with uh, unkillable teams, especially like block damage or block debuffs when you're not using a man eater, is dealing with the stun. The stun goes to the wrong person that can really undermine your entire team. Well, you know, we have like that Skull Crusher Tower team where Skull Crusher will take the stun. Um, when you face it on blue affinity, it becomes almost impossible to get Skull Crusher to take the stun. R having Rorik Wormbane in your team could be a nice alternative because as a green affinity champion, he can take that stun. He'll be the preferred target. And especially when you have the ally protection from uh, Skull Crusher on him, that can actually work out really well. So he could be a uh, perfect alternate stun target for that kind of a build. Um, I built something similar, but not exact. And since we weren't hitting affinity in the test server, it wasn't really worth uh, necessarily showing it off because the stun would always go to skull crusher. But I think there is a lot of potential to that kind of a thing for that type of a team. Um, I haven't tried them in something like the budget unkillable. That 30% turn meter boost on this A1, I think makes it prohibitive for that type of team, at least not as a... Uh, stun target perhaps as an alternate as one of the damage dealers i could see there's potential for it but my guess is you'd have to kind of come up with a whole new tune uh and because of that it, it would be pretty difficult to do that 30 percent turn meter boost is significant and the stun target's already about as slow as a champion can be so it'd be very hard to get them even slower than that um not to say it can't be done you know lots of brilliant minds out there and i encourage you guys to go ahead and try and figure that out for yourselves i i have no doubts that one of you out there can make this happen um i'm just not that person uh at least not this time around what i'm saying about him and clan boss kind of applies to every area of the game right he's okay he does some things well um he's not perfect and he doesn't hit quite hard enough that's pretty much my assessment of him in all areas of the game right the aoe stuns great except you need that turn meter reduction first uh the turn meter reduction is great except it's not 100 percent um the single target's a wonderful skill right stun or turn meter boost is great um and his a3 is really strong except his multipliers on it aren't big enough to really make him worth it there as a true counter champion um you know there's there's a lot of really nice things about his kit but there's also some gaps in it which make him a little bit more situational so um i understand a lot of people aren't really happy with this fusion i think he's fine uh not every fusion can be under priest brogni or iron brago we have to have some champions that are you know mid-tier and i think this is a mid-tier fusion champion um you know it's a fragment fusion so a lot easier to attain as well um but i feel like if you miss out on rorik it's not going to be the end of the world. You're going to be fine with that. Um, but I do feel like he's still worth getting if you can. I feel like there's going to be some uses for him because he has such a unique kit. It's just is so different from what anybody else has uh, with that passive counter ability and the stun, uh, blocking the stun and stuff. There's a lot of interesting stuff to his kit. So, I mean, maybe not. Maybe he won't end ever end up getting used and will stay in your fault. That's always a risk that we run. But... Uh, 
I mean, I don't know. I, I think he's got a place in this game. So you can see we're getting some pretty decent results uh, from these unkillable teams where he's actually doing fair good amount of damage. I mean, he's a good single target raw damage dealer uh, for your team. That's definitely a place for him. Um, I generally prefer my clan boss champions to bring something else to the table like decreased defense, weaken, decrease attack, something, a buff for everybody else. But if you think about his block stun ability that's almost like a or stun immunity that's almost like a buff for the stun and then he's got that speed aura which is really nice too so he does bring some things to the table that i think you guys can benefit from so that's Rorik Wormbane and Clan Boss. I feel like he's going to be a solid champion for a lot of people, but now you get to see him firsthand, what he can do, how you might want to use him. Um, don't forget, there is that Contra Returns uh, link down below in the description and pinned comment of this video. Please check that out. If you like those kinds of games, it was a lot of fun. So I definitely recommend you guys go ahead and download it. I think you'll enjoy that uh, and you won't regret it. So that's all we have for today. Till next we meet, I'm the Deadwood Jedi.